right now, live from Manitoba's News Network, Pulse News at 6. Tonight. Swan Valley farmers say elk capture rules are unfair. And. The Wheat Kings look to build on their latest winning streak. Plus, the big story. Manitoba consumers come out on top as the CRTC denies MTS's rate hike. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us. Karen Mitchell has the evening off. Well, another day, another drop for the dollar. The loonie closed below the 70-cent mark today despite efforts by the central bank to boost it. Analysts say the Bank of Canada will likely hold off raising its key rate. With more on the nation's finances, here's Robert Lack. The news just keeps getting worse for the Canadian dollar. It's been bouncing around, mostly lower for weeks. But this morning, the bottom fell out. It quickly sank below 70 cents, falling as low as 69.71 at one point, and it's been unable to recover. I would call this a mini-crisis for the Canadian dollar. Um, we are now less than a cent away from the all-time lows for the currency. Uh, the pace of decline, the mood of the market, the feeling that there's no credibility in the currency, nor the central bank for that matter, um, tells me that we are actually on the, on the precipice of a, of a crisis for the currency. Many economists felt the Bank of Canada would weigh in with an interest rate hike if the dollar were to slip below 70 cents, but that did not happen. Instead, the bank bought dollars on currency markets in an attempt to prop it up. Well, I think the, the key thing here is the bank is looking ahead. Uh, they've got inflation targets to, uh, to worry about. Uh, they realize they need to tighten monetary policy, but I don't think they want to get into a game with the market. Well, see, right now the Bank of Canada doesn't really want to hike rates if it uh, can avoid it at all. The economy is still reasonably weak in the sense that unemployment is still high. There is no inflation danger. So from a domestic point of view, there's really no reason to, to increase interest rates. What's really happening is it's being imposed on us by the external world. And Finance Minister Paul Martin has been out stressing the point that the fundamentals in the economy appear strong. Uh, well, as you know, ministers of finance uh, don't comment on the dollar, uh, but they certainly comment on the economy, and the, our economy is very, very strong. In fact, all of the large international institutions, OECD, the IMF, are coming out with their uh, year-end forecasts, and all of them are saying that Canada is going to have the strongest growth of any of the G7 countries. Strong growth, but a weak dollar. Many economists say the dollar could easily slide to 68 cents over the next few weeks and stay there. Robert Lack, CBC News, Toronto. Manitoba consumers were the big winners as the CRTC rejected MTS's request for a phone rate rate increase of $3 a month. Instead, the utility has been allowed to hike rates by only 35 cents. That's the lowest of all the increases across Canada. Yesterday's decision by the Canadian Radio, Tele Television and Telecommunications Commission comes into effect on January 1st. As well, the Commission has deregulated long-distance rates. That means you may pay less for long-distance calls. Meanwhile, Brandon East MLA Len Evans says he's pleased with the decision. He says Manitobans got the best deal all around. Uh, regrettably, the Philman government chose not to go before the CRTC to oppose this. The Philman government just stood back and uh, did nothing. But it was the uh, voices of the municipalities and the seniors' organizations on behalf of consumers that were heard, and in this case, uh, they won. With the recent announcement of the Maple Leaf Hog Processing Plant opening in the Wheat City, some of our neighbors are wondering how they will be affected. So today at City Hall, administration took the first step in answering some of the concerns. Mike Yanni has more in this report. Like many people, Dennis Heaney has concerns over the new Maple Leaf plant opening its doors in Brandon. Heaney is the Reeve of Elton, a nearby municipality, which hopes to capture the benefits of having the plant nearby. I have lots of concerns. Which are some of those concerns? Well, I have concerns about how we're going to uh, organize and be prepared for what looks like there's going to be a fair amount of growth in this area. 
That's why Heaney and close to 50 other Reeves and mayors from across Westman attended an informational meeting put together by the city of Brandon. The idea of the meeting is to keep people informed about how it will affect the communities around Brandon the way we see it, and then they can start to think about it, and then they can get back to us, and we can just point, keep our uh, lines of communication open and keep our heads together on this thing. Issues such as job creation, transportation, and environmental impact were all discussed at the gathering, but more information is yet to come. Delegates from the city of Brandon will be traveling to Austin, Minnesota, where a similar meat plant is operating to get yet more information. And we're uh, going to meet with the mayor of, of this city, and we're going to meet with the Chamber of Commerce, and we're going to see how it's affected the city. We're going to look at the plant from an environmentally point of view and just see how, uh, what it means to their community. The city hopes to set up a public meeting to further discuss how the plant will affect the Brandon area in January when they return home from Austin, Minnesota. In Brandon, Mike Yanni, Pulse News. Turtle Mountain MLA Merv Tweed is hopeful the recent establishment of a new community round table will help to create a stronger community. Tweed says teamwork is the key to making good decisions for the community. He says the round table gives residents the opportunity to work together to identify priority areas. With today's announcement, there are now 83 community round tables in the province. And family members of patients at the Brandon Mental Health Center are worried about what will happen once the center closes its doors early next year. Leslie Nielsen spoke with some family members today and files this report. Margaret Howard and Irma Brudeline will try to have a Merry Christmas, but they say it's going to be hard. Both of the ladies' husbands are psychogeriatric patients at the Brandon Mental Health Center, which soon will close its doors. The ladies have heard their husbands may be transferred to Selkirk. The government made a decision to put people in more into the community, and this, of course, has happened. But there are certain categories of people who continue to need institutional care including psychogeriatric patients, of which there have been many over the years at BMHC. And there's still a fair number there, and this is the problem we have. Uh, what is going to happen to these people when this facility is totally closed? Mrs. Howard's husband, Bob, has Alzheimer's. She fears his condition will only deteriorate if he is moved to Selkirk. I've walked with him daily through this 12 years of, of the disease, and certainly I can't go the rest of the way if he's going to be that far away. So I'm desperately wanting to know that there will be a place for him in Brandon. Mrs. Brudeline rides in a taxi to visit her husband every day. Like Mrs. Howard, she says if he is moved, she would not be able to visit him very often. And he would be very upset if he realizes that he's somewhere else. When he depends on me when I go and see him, you know, he's always happy to see me. He doesn't talk very much, but he's, I sit beside him and hold his hand, and that's his, that's what he likes. Brandon East MLA Len Evans wrote to Darren Prasnick, requesting that the Minister of Health review the situation immediately. I believe that it would be uh, totally inhumane and uncaring on the part of the Philman government if it didn't provide sufficient funds to the Brandon health care system to enable the facilities here to care for psychogeriatric patients in an adequate and proper way. We have to find the space, we have to find the staff to look after these people. The hospital will close its doors early in the new year. Mrs. Howard and Mrs. Brudeline say they'll have to wait for some type of government action to know what the future holds for themselves and their husbands. In Brandon, Leslie Nielsen, Pulse News. The MS Society is continuing their fight to have a drug covered by the province. They will meet with the province's Drug Standards Committee in January to present their case. But in the meantime, they are still sending their message to the health minister, delivering petitions of 3,000 signatures. Show him that, uh, that this is an issue that we want dealt with in a more uh, expeditious manner. Uh, we, don't, uh, we don't want the minister to get the impression that we're simply just going to sit and wait and, and uh, be satisfied with yet another delay. And RCMP have identified a 34-year-old Ninga man who died last night when his pickup truck rolled over in a ditch. Timothy Gerald Lafort is, has died. Police say he was thrown more than 15 meters from the truck. Lafort wasn't wearing a seatbelt and alcohol is believed to have been a factor in the accident. 
Transport Canada and the RCMP are advising the public about a potential danger to the type of child's car seat. It's the Evenflow Altera 1 and Altera 1 Premier. 90,000 of the seats were made in February 1996 and October of 97. Apparently one of the tether straps can pull away from the plastic shell in a head-on accident. What happened in this particular case was the seat itself broke here. The, the plastic here fractured uh, and the tether strap broke free from the car seat. The lap and shoulder belt that were holding the seat did hold the seat in place and the child was not injured. This is the first and only time it has ever happened and there are 90,000 of these seats on the market right now. And uh, the company uh, uh, diligently uh, made available these reinforcing kits at no charge to all the consumers. And Ron joins us now for a sneak peek of weather. <laughs> what is there to say? Wow. It yeah. is so gorgeous. It really it feels like summertime. Another superb day today in western Manitoba. A little cooler than, of course, what we have been getting. But, uh, you know, it looks like maybe on Sunday up to 6 degrees again. Wow. Which is beyond belief, That's friends. Yeah. Anyway, we seem to be punching the right buttons for a few folks. Anyway, let's take a look at the current <laughs> conditions in the Brandon area. And it's uh, one of those happy holidays, a nice happy evening out with uh, minus 3 degrees. A little breezy, though. West of 24, gusting to 35. And the humidity right now is at 64%. Complete weather coming right up at the bottom of the hour. Thanks, Ron. Coming up in sports, Mike gives the Wheat Kings their mid-season report cards. And later on, we'll tell you about a Brandon man who truly, truly understands the meaning of Christmas. But up next, we'll check in with Swan River to see how successful they've been with their new youth curfew. This segment of Pulse News at 6 was sponsored by Atkinson Implements, your New Holland dealer in Hartney, where our customers are number one. got a great Christmas gift for you. Murray's of Nepal and General Motors of Canada have teamed up to offer you 0% financing. That's right, 0% financing on all new pickups. We're also offering 0% financing on Astro and Safari vans, plus 0% financing on all Venture and Transport vans. It's the event of the season, the 0% financing event at Murray's of Nepal. A short way to go for a big way to save. Some days you have all the luck. This holiday season, play scratch and win. You could win 10, 20, even 30,000 instantly. Hey, you never know. The Brandon Wheat Kings will be out to shoot down the Moose Jaw Warriors Friday night when they bring down the curtain on the first half of the 97-98 WHL regular season. The Wheat Kings are now within striking distance of the leaders in the Eastern Division. Friday's game sponsor is McDonald's and will feature a special appearance of Ronald McDonald. As well, all children attending will have a chance to win some great prizes. For tickets, call the box office at 726-3555. That's the Wheat Kings and Warriors Friday night, 7.30 in the Keystone Center. Welcome back. The town of Swan River has been in the headlines as of late. Residents of the town took a rather unique but proactive approach to dealing with the growing cases of youth crime. They initiated a town curfew. And as Jason Mowata tells us, the kids are getting in on time. The streets of Swan River were becoming a concern. A high level of youth vagrancy was leading to crime and calls for action. First of all, about the safety of young children being out on the street late at night. That was one of the main concerns, and also concerns expressed by local business people about vandalism to their property and things that, that were happening uh, by groups of young children. They felt a curfew was the best possible solution, so taking examples from other jurisdictions, they implemented a staggered curfew based on age, 
where both parents and children can be ultimately held responsible. The intent of the bylaw wasn't that at, at the specific hour the RCMP would go out with four paddy wagons and round everybody up. It's a tool that the RCMP can use if there's a situation arise. Before, if there was a group of young kids out on the street and they were causing a disturbance, uh, the RCMP would uh, confront them and they just sort of thumb their nose at them. For the few months the curfew has been in effect, both break and enters and vandalism have been reduced. The RCMP in enforcing the bylaw are pleased to be meeting one of the community's needs. Our whole philosophy of the RCMP in, in policing is community-based policing. And through community-based policing, we want to police the way that people want us to police. So we are working very closely with, uh, with towns and, 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 and community groups and people of that nature. So we provide the best service that we can. While all sides remain optimistic about the program's effectiveness, they know the true test will come next spring and summer when the weather improves and school is out. In Swan River, Jason Mawada, Pulse News. The community is also calling for some infrastructure money to put into local roads. Now that the Louisiana Pacific Mail is up and running, truck traffic on area roads has dramatically increased. So much so, local officials say the situation could be dangerous. Uh, we've had concerns expressed by residents about the number of trucks, not only logging trucks, but agricultural trucks uh, transporting uh, things like anhydrous ammonia through the town. So what we're in the process of doing is lobbying the uh, provincial government for uh, a truck route that would direct some of this traffic around the town of Swan River. Well, the elk industry received a boost this year when government-owned animals were sold by lottery to prospective producers. The elk were captured for the draw by predetermined farmers. They were able to keep 10% of the animals they caught. Now, some are saying that it is unfair. Once again, here's Jason Mawada. Elk have a slightly different view in the public eye here in the Swan River Valley. To many area producers, they're best described as a public nuisance as they feed from farmers' winter feed supplies. The figure has been as high as $150,000 to $200,000 in damage that's been paid for, plus a lot of other damage that, that can't be measured and, and isn't getting paid for. And it uh, has created a lot of resentment over the years that uh, uh, farmers have, have uh, got so they don't like seeing too many elk around. It's led to calls of change. Many have asked for better resource management with hunting, but as the province continues its process of wild captures, some of these producers, seeing a lucrative elk industry, want to participate, taking some animals permanently out of the wild and giving them a fresh start. The people that have been feeding them uh, have, uh, have had a lot of uh, dollars out of their pocket over the last number of years and, and would like to see some of that brought back to us if, if there's some way of doing it. Negotiations have been ongoing, with the province giving a lukewarm reception in the ongoing dispute. For Barker, it's simply a matter of greater public input into a currently closed system. When they're staying out on private land year-round, uh, we feel they should be managed different than, than uh, wild animals on public land. That uh, the, the landowner should have a, uh, a lot more say in, in how they're managed than, than has been the case in the past. But in Swan River, Jason Mawada, Pulse News. Farmers should see more money in the bank as prices for wheat and barley hit near record levels. The Canadian Wheat Board announced the farmers' final payments. That's the balance of money owed to them after the grain has been sold by the board, minus the operating costs. The board says checks for final payments will be mailed next week, while direct deposit accounts will be credited January 2nd. There's been a sharp decline in the number of farms and farmers in Saskatchewan. Statistics Canada says the number of both dropped by more than 6% between 1990 and 1996. Premier Roy Romano says it's not a big surprise if you consider the pressures facing farmers. He says the provincial government plans to work with Ottawa to try to slow down the decline. And now let's go live to the Keystone and check in with Dean Mulberg. Thanks, Carrie. We're getting ready for hockey night uh, in the Keystone. It's going to be the brand of Wheat Kings hosting the Moose Jaw Warriors. The rivalry continues. We'll give you some inside scoop as to tonight's matchup. Game time is always at 7.30. We're coming back with all that after the break. Head to the claw. Bear Claw Casino and Lodge is now open three miles south of Kenosi, Saskatchewan. 
Stay in one of their four luxurious suites or 32 comfortable rooms while you play roulette, slots, blackjack, big wheel, VLTs, and poker. 15,000 square feet of gaming. Plus, you'll enjoy the restaurant, lounge, convention center, and the Bear Necessities gift shop. Bear Claw Casino and Lodge, now open three miles south of Kenosi, Saskatchewan. I'll be home for Christmas. Home. You can plan on me. Yeah. Big turkey. Christmas means entertaining, and that means you could use a little help. That's a big turkey. Fortunately, everything you need for holiday entertaining is at your neighborhood home hardware. Give this RCA portable stereo CD cassette player, or this mini system with CD player and dual cassette. Hey. Brushing twice a day, you could be ruining your hair. It's true. A simple act of brushing can break your hair. The solution? Pantene Pro V shampoo and conditioners to help keep your hair strong so it breaks less. Pantene Pro V for hair so healthy looking it shines. Did you know you can relieve your upset stomach without suffering from the taste of the remedy? Try Pepto Bismol caplets with water. Taste free relief you can stomach. Olympic gold medalist Mia Hamm spends 90 minutes destroying her hair and 90 seconds bringing it back. With Perk Plus, more than a shampoo, it conditions too. How? As you shampoo, the conditioners stay suspended. As you rinse, the conditioners go to work, giving you great hair, simply. Perfect for Mia, because she wants great hair, but she'd rather be living in it than working on it. Wouldn't you? Perk Plus, simply great hair, simply. Pulse Sports is brought to you by Dufresne Furniture and Appliances, where we simply sell for less. Welcome back. Mike joins us now with sports, and I understand it's another hockey night in Pulse Newsland. Yeah, we got Weed Kings tonight. We're very close to the Christmas break, so uh, mm -hmm. go down and watch them tonight, because you won't see them until uh, after Christmas. Sort of a Great. Christmas treat, if you will. And you can say hi to Dino down there, too. Absolutely. <laughs> we'll say hi to him in a second. She gave it away. <laughs> I love the Moose Jaw Warriors. If for no other reason, it makes me sound tough whenever I get to say the name of the city. Moose Jaw. Well, they're in town tonight in Dean Malberg. Yes, he is down at the Stone. Hi, Dean. And he's got more on tonight's game. You love Moose Jaw. I'll tell you, it is going to be the Moose Jaw Warriors and the Brandon Wheat Kings down here tonight. As always, game time, 7.30. Going to be a good one, as uh, Moose Jaw and Brandon always seem to have a pretty good rivalry whenever they get hooked up, and we'll hope that that kind of renews itself here tonight. We Kings are on a four-game winning streak. They have really picked things up. They had a horrible November. They have gone 7-2-1 and one in their past 10 over the course of uh, December, which is good news for the We Kings, who are right back into the thick of things as far as the race in the Eastern Division is concerned. They sit one point ahead of the Regina Pats and four points back of the first place with current Broncos. Those two teams play each other tonight in Swift. Of course, a big Regina win there would bring the Wheat Kings to within two points. The Warriors, who they are playing tonight, 21 points back of the Wheat Kings, so I don't want to jinx them, but they should probably pick up the V tonight. The uh, injuries are going to be key. There are nine guys who are out of the lineup. I will run it down for you now if I can get it all in one breath. Jamie Hodson, Daniel Tetrode, Brett Gerard, Les Borsheim, Bobby Levins, Aaron Goldade, Alex Argariu, Ryan Robson, and Scott McCollum are all scratches tonight. So the guys are going to have to step things up in, uh, in hopes to get, uh, to get healthy and to uh, get a victory tonight. And uh, again, it's a good thing that they are playing a weaker team. It should help. Jomar Cruz will get the win tonight. Three wins in a row for Jormar Cruz, so hopefully he can stretch it to four tonight. And Bobby Lowe's has won 248 games in his WHL career, needs four more to uh, catch Dunk, McCollum, and the Wheat Kings' all-time record. So tonight, uh, a pretty important game as far as some of the stats go. Mike, back to you. All righty, thank you, Dean. And Dean, you know, is a very nice guy. Al Tour fell asleep on the bus on the way here. His hair was all matted. He didn't have his tie on. He didn't want to do an interview. Dean did a very good job. Elsewhere tonight, Jerkwater's back in the news. You remember Brent Peterson's remark about Regina? Yeah, the Pats play in Speedy Creek. It's Toontown, home to the Hitmen, while the Rebels move into Edmonton, out west. Peterson and the Hawks play in Tri-Cities, while Seattle entertains Kamloops. TA continues their western swing as they play tonight in Kelowna. The Nipawan natives, more secure now in fourth. They've got several games in hand on Dauphin. They'll play host to the Southeast Blades. The Kings have the night off. Selkirk visits St. James Portage entertains Winkler. In the Westman High School Hockey League, the Rolling River Assassins 
will head into Russell and try and kill the popular Trojans. Dawson hosts Hamiota at the DMCC while the Minidosa Chancellors entertain the South Park Bruins and the Crocus Plainsmen take their act to the road. They take on the Brutal Falcons and the Brandon Stingers return home to play the St. Claude Knights. 7.45 start at the Kinsman. The Manitoba Moose have had most of this week off, although they've been doing some roster shuffling. Yesterday, Trevor Halverson and Craig Johnson were released, while blue liner Jack Williams was inked into a contract. Ooh, the household names. Tonight, it's back to the old grind as a herd take on the Chicago Wolves, and yes, this is still part of that big 12-game homestand, which so far has not been beneficial at all. Sean Churchill has the latest saga. <laughs> Despite the fact that Manitoba is 0-3 against Chicago this year, the Moose may have the upper hand on the pack tonight. The Moose lost by a goal to Chicago a week and a half ago, but dominated. So what, if anything, does Randy Carlisle change? Well, we'd like to change the outcome, you know, <laughs> that's for sure. You know, they're a good hockey club. Obviously, they've been rolling along pretty well, and, uh, you know, we've got a, quite a task in our hands. Uh, we're not going to take anything for granted. Uh, we know that we've got to, to be at the top of our game and, and execution specifically against this team. The Moose scored four times in the last outing on Sunday against Detroit. A rarity considering the offensive output the past month, but more bad news. Sniper Greg Tankowitz is questionable for tonight with a bruised ankle. On the positive side, the defense remains solid, anchored by the last line of defense, which is not about to hand out advice to the slumping forwards. I just try to do my job, keep the puck out of the net. I mean, I'm not going to tell them what to do because I don't want them telling me what to do. So, um, I mean, the goals are going to start coming, and uh, when they do, they'll probably come in bunches. you got to just kind of tighten up a little bit more, you know. I mean, if we're only scoring two a night, they can only let in one a night. So it tightens us up a bit, but, you know, sometimes it's nice, like last game, you know, have a little lead. You know, we, we as goaltenders play different, and the forwards play different. So, and it gives them a little more confidence. At the end of the day, I don't really look at, you know, if I did my job or they did their job. You know, it's either a loss or a W, and uh, right now it's been, it's been in the L column for myself. <laughs> During troubled times, the goaltender's role increases and includes duties as a cheerleader and even psychologist. You want the team to get on a roll. I mean, lately, we don't, we haven't done very well. We've had, you know, little spurts. I mean, we've, we've played solid, but, you know, the bounces just didn't go our way. But, uh, you know, from the bench, you know, or on the ice, you just want to, you know, encourage the guys the best you can. I don't know. I mean, just uh, try to keep up and uh, try to keep a relaxed atmosphere around the rink. And, uh, I mean, as I said, the goals are going to come in bunches. You know, it's... Uh, Kind of funny, Moose Jaw. I love to say Moose Jaw. Do you have yeah. a favorite favorite town you like to? Way Way Sicapo. Really? Yep. Why? Because it's just well, Way Way Sicapo. No, I couldn't say it the first time I saw it. And oh, really? Practiced and practiced, and that is in my head. Way Way Sicapo. I knew of a journalist who came from uh, out of province, and they used to call Wasagaming Wasagaming. Oh. <laughs> that was that was their favorite <laughs> town. Wasagaming. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Thanks, Mike. Okay. Let's check in with Ron now to see what's going on in weather. Not too much, actually. Some great weather for the weekend and for Christmas week. Looks good. Complete weather is coming up. Are you brushing twice a day? You could be ruining your hair. It's true. The simple act of brushing can strip away vital protein, even cause your hair to break. The solution? Pantene Pro-V Shampoo and Conditioner. To help keep your hair strong, Pantene's Pro-Vitamins penetrate the root while the conditioning formula helps improve the entire length of your hair to help keep it healthy looking, shiny and strong. So it breaks less. Pantene Pro-V. For hair so healthy looking, it shines. Don't forget to brush. I like having fresh smelling laundry every day. So how do I keep things fresh every day and not spend my life doing laundry? I switch to new Outdoor Fresh Bounce. It helps keep our things fresh day after day. It now has patented time-release freshness that's released slowly, so your laundry stays outdoor fresh for up to five days. No other sheet keeps our things fresher. For freshness that stays up to five days. Turn to bounce. New Outdoor Fresh Bounce. Community partnerships have a positive impact on the local job market through the provision of regional employment skills and services. Skills training in a variety of areas, from short order truck to class one truck driving. Computer skills and business training to retail meat cutting is available in a community near you. Centers are located in Carberry, Minidosa, Meepawah, Burden, Delarain, and Russell. Contact the center nearest to you. Regional employment skills and services. Communities working in partnership. These projects are funded by the Brandon Human Resources Center. Did you know Santa Claus is a temp? Just ask Computemp. 
They offer permanent, temporary, and contract employees for all positions. The help you need when you need it. One call does it all. A sincere wish for a happy holiday from Tannis Val and the staff at Computem. We at Classic Hairstyling Academy would like to take this opportunity to thank all of our clients for their past patronage. We look forward to serving you in the coming new year. Merry Christmas and a very happy new year from all of us at Classic Hairstyling Academy. Randy Kowalczyk, electric and mechanical, your York dealer specializing in high-efficiency furnaces, heat pumps, air conditioning, and air cleaners. Wishes his many friends and customers the best of the holiday season. Season's greetings from Randy Kowalczyk, electric and mechanical, serving Carberry and area. On behalf of Wayne Dimery and Jim Marshall at M&M Grocery of Erickson, the best to their many friends and customers. They look forward to serving you again in 98. Season's greetings from Wayne Dimery and Jim Marshall at M&M Grocery of Erickson. Pulse Weather is brought to you by Fowler Pontiac Buick GMC Limited, 3900 Victoria Avenue West. Good evening, friends. Well, guess what? This is the Meadows School Christmas Concert. It was uh, videotaped this morning at the Meadows School, and they performed in front of the kids, and they had a grand time. They most certainly did. And a Merry Christmas to all the kids at Meadows School and to all the school kids who are in a lot of areas now out until about the 5th of January. Alrighty, let's take a look at uh, the surface map. Brandon's temperature, by the way, minus 3. As the cold front uh, swept through us last night and early this morning, very strong northwesterly flow this afternoon. We have uh, wind gusts at times up to around 30, 35 this evening. That will have the tendency to draw temperatures down to about minus 13 to minus 16 as a ridge line starts to poke in, clearing the uh, skies in western Manitoba. And with the clear skies, of course, cool temperatures. However, tomorrow, more of a westerly flow is starting to develop around the uh, high as we get a clockwise rotation and more of a westerly flow. With the westerly flow, up go the temperatures. And by Sunday, believe it or not, this sounds like Ripley's possibly plus six in a few areas. Temperatures across Canada right now, you can see cold up north, warm in B.C. Temperatures moderate in Saskatchewan and Alberta, minus one in Calgary, of course. Uh, minus four in Thunder Bay, five Toronto, minus or plus four Ottawa, Montreal, two Halifax, minus four St. John's. Forecast coming up right now, your regional roundup. extra savings for you. Fowler Pontiac Buick GMC and GM of Canada are pleased to offer you reduced rate financing on over 120 new 1997 and 1998 models. Get 0% financing up to 48 months on two and four wheel drive pickups, safari vans and transport vans. And on selected new cars, take advantage of low 2.9% financing. Fowler Pontiac Buick GMC is making buying that new vehicle a whole lot easier with low rate financing on new 1997 and 98 models. Hurry in to 3900 Victoria Avenue for this limited time offer. Record high, 3.3, 1923. The record low, minus 38.9, 1922. Normals are minus 11 and minus 20. And one year ago, minus 59 and minus 34.9. Wow, that was a cold day this time last year. Sun rose at 8.32. It's set at 4.41. We're down to 8 hours and 9 minutes of daylight, by the way. Uh, winter starts Sunday at around 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Just thought you'd like to know. Here's the forecast in detail for tonight. Few clouds with light wind by morning temperatures. Hmm, a little chilly. Hey, that's not bad. Minus 16 degrees. Come on, let's face it. This is wonderful what we have. Variable cloud right now. Minus 1, the forecast high for tomorrow. Wind southwest 20 and for Sunday. Look at that. Minus 1 to plus 6 degrees. Low of minus 5. Monday, minus 2 and minus 7 degrees. Minus 7 on Tuesday with sunshine and a low of minus 16 degrees. If you're traveling... Couldn't get any better. Have yourselves a good evening, friends. Easy does it for now. That's the weather. Pulse Weather has been brought to you by Fowler Pontiac Buick GMC Limited, 3900 Victoria Avenue West. And stay with us. When we're back from the break, we'll bring you a heartwarming story of a Brandon man who is truly the father of Christmas. Happy holidays, our dear. At the 
Boutique's We Make Christmas Special. Very special. Purchase an elegant diamond solitaire necklace exquisitely designed, available in a variety of sizes, and pay no taxes on all diamond jewelry. This Christmas, shop Zeke's Matt and Rosser, Brandon, Nibois, and Minidosa, where we make Christmas special. Be happy, happy holidays are here. The Brandon Wheat Kings will be out to shoot down the Moose Jaw Warriors Friday night when they bring down the curtain on the first half of the 97-98 WHL regular season. The Wheat Kings are now within striking distance of the leaders in the Eastern Division. Friday's game sponsor is McDonald's and will feature a special appearance of Ronald McDonald. As well, all children attending will have a chance to win some great prizes. For tickets, call the box office at 726-3555. That's the Wheat Kings and Warriors Friday night, 7.30 in the Keystone Center. During this festive season, Stan's IGA invites you to come and shop with friends. Wishing you the best of the holiday season, Stan's IGA in Brannan and Rivers. On behalf of the management and staff at Red Carpet Food Services in Brandon, have a safe and happy holiday season and all the best in 98. May the happiness of the season abide with you daily in the year to come. That's a sincere wish from everyone at Red Carpet Food Services. Pulse News, sponsored by Atkinson Implements, your southwestern Manitoba New Holland parts and service dealership in Hartman. As we told you last night, a Brandon man who truly understands the spirit of Christmas is marching on. Robbie Addison, who is suffering from cancer, has been told he only has six months to two years to live. Despite his personal crisis, he is still insisting on carrying on his tradition. Here's more from Linda Crawford. Bobby Addison is practically a household name in Brandon. For nine years, he held this Christmas dinner for the poor and lonely. We had been recited one Christmas after opening up a gift that uh, was very meaningless for us because, as you know, uh, we just uh, sometimes you get a, a gift and it's not the right color or it's the wrong thing, and uh, so we decided to to get something different, and, uh, and I guess that's, that's where it all started. We decided that we didn't appreciate the gift as much as giving. The dinner lasted until 1994 when they fed 1,800 people, but it cost too much money and time for the Addison family to continue. We brought the spirit back by bringing the people in together and, and just loving each other, and uh, there was a lot of hugs and a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, sharing uh, with their personal stories and uh, so the people who were helping were getting as much out of it as the people that were receiving so I think uh, that's the spirit this particular exercise does is it this year Addison is spending the week before Christmas getting radiation treatment he has an inoperable brain tumor and only a matter of weeks to live but his message hasn't changed but do you want to uh, say to other people to carry that on that's the most important question you asked me that, that is the most important one for me is that reach out and touch somebody. Here, actually, I consider more to be like an angel. He's one of those angels that's been put on here in, this, in, the, in the human form, and uh, he just goes about and does his thing. He's just a wonderful person, and it shows in his family and everyone he touches in his life. But Addison says he's no hero. All he wants is for each one of us to think of someone else this Christmas. There's people down the street that are hurting uh, or offer somebody, somebody a ham or something a little hamper and if you do one and i do one then we'll cover most people who are in need and that's love for me it's all about love last spring flood waters nearly destroyed saint agath for some residents the devastation of losing their homes has been matched only by the frustration of rebuilding this holiday the town is hoping to conquer the flood once and for all with its own holiday spirit Cameron McIntosh has this report from St. Agath. The sights and sounds of Christmas. This year in St. Agath, they mean more than ever for residents like Eugene Lemoyne. Well, it's very important to boost the morale, uh, to bring everybody's spirits back up to, to what they were before, you know. Lemoyne's home was among the majority damaged when floodwaters immersed St. Agath last May, Manitoba's worst flood disaster. 
out-of-town Christmas party Thursday night, however, provided an escape for the emotional and political battles residents say they've been gradually winning. I'm not saying we're 100%, but we're probably 85 plus, you know, as far as being back to normal. Bye, guys. Normal enough for children to look at Christmas with their usual expectations. Parents are working to oblige. However, in many of their driveways, trailers sit among the Christmas lights as reminders of the rebuilding that continues. However, residents are determined the flood won't wash this holiday away. Oh, I think it's very important this year. We've had a tough year, so I think it's very important. However, realizing that Merry Christmas will be harder for some families than others. There are still 200 flood families that are out of home this Christmas. And the Red Cross estimates there are as many as 600 Christmas hampers needed here in the Red River Valley. They're asking anyone who can make a donation or help deliver them to get in touch. In St. Agathe, Cameron McIntosh, MTN News. Habitat for Humanity is pleased with the success of their Playhouse fundraiser. Tickets for a chance to win one of the Playhouses can be purchased at their office in the Brennan Gallery. Organizers say they have so far raised 7000 of the $25,000 needed to build the house next summer. It's just been a most wonderful fundraiser. We have raised up to now close to $7,000 in uh, less than three weeks, and uh, we'll be keeping this going until January 10th, so, so we're looking for this to uh, put us well on the way. The Manitoba government, native leaders, and aircraft operators say they will beef up safety at the province's 22 northern airports. Transportation Minister Glenn Finley met yesterday with chiefs of northern bands and aircraft owners to map out plans to review and upgrade airports in northern communities. Finley says better lighting and navigation equipment will likely be the first steps in the upgrading. Airport safety has become a major if issue after last week's crash in Little Grand Rapids, which killed four people. The Transportation Safety Board says a communications glitch let Air Canada paint over the decals on its plane that crashed on Tuesday in Fredericton. Today, however, attention is turning to the pilot of Flight 646. The regional jet bounced off the runway and swerved into a stand of trees. The pilot was released from hospital this morning. A passenger was also released while seven others are being treated. So far, investigators have only listened to the cockpit recordings. They indicate the pilot lost control of the plane when a wingtip hit the runway. Airline officials in Indonesia say a Singapore passenger jet crashed into a river without sending a distress signal. Foreign Affairs says no Canadians were on board. However, five Americans are reported to be among the more than 100 people involved. Officials say they fear all aboard the Silk Air Boeing 737 are dead. The sole survivor of Princess Diana's fatal crash car is saying he still can't remember anything new. Trevor Reese Jones talked to the judge investigating the crash in Paris today. Here's more from Anne McMillan. Trevor Reese Jones was mobbed by the French media in Paris today when he turned up for his third interview with the judge investigating the accident that killed the Princess of Wales. Rhys Jones, the only survivor of the car crash, has already had two meetings with the judge in which he said he could not remember details of the accident. Meanwhile, a French magazine, Perry Match, published an interview which it says was the last given by the princess. The princess is quoted as saying she has profound feelings for Dodi al Faid, and that she was only saved from distress and solitude in her unhappy marriage to Prince Charles by her love for her sons, William and Harry. An anonymous interviewer claimed to have talked to Diana and her boyfriend in the south of France a few days before they died. The interview was not published until now, says the magazine, out of respect for the memory of the princess. The story dominated front page news in Britain today. Quotes from the interview were splashed over nearly every paper. There's a lot of speculation about whether the interview is authentic, but that didn't stop one tabloid publication from devoting five pages to the story. Anne McMillan. CBC News, London. And now let's go live to the Keystone to check in with Dean Malberg. Thanks, Kerry. Back down at the Keystone Center getting ready for the big one tonight. The Mushaw Warriors in town to take on the Brandon Wheat Kings. Lots of injuries. We'll talk to one of the walking wounded, Ryan Robson, right after the break. Wheat Belt Equipment, your Case IH dealer. 
we serve you better. Our sales staff keep on top of the farming industry. Let their knowledge work for you. No matter what the size of your operation, we have the proven case parts you need to keep you producing. And our product support team are ready when you need them most. At Wheat Belt Equipment, we know you work hard day in, day out. We're working hard to deliver excellence in everything we do. Wheat Belt Equipment, your Case IH dealer. On behalf of Barb, the entire staff, and myself at Dairy Queen in Nipawa. The best view this holiday season, remember, for hot eats and cool treats, visit us at Dairy Queen in Nipawa, where... We treat you right. F. Kozak and Sons of Nipawa wish one and all the best of the holiday season. They thank you for your support and look forward to serving you. From ready-mix concrete, excavation to sand and gravel service, you can rely on F. Kozak and Sons Nipawa open year-round to serve your needs. Happy Holidays from the management and staff at Leon's, featuring the best deals in furniture and appliances. They hope that this joyous time of year finds you in good health, good spirits, and enjoying good company. Have a safe and happy holiday season from Leon's in Brandon. On behalf of Larry and staff at Star Printing, season's greetings to all their friends and customers. They would like to thank you for your patronage and look forward to serving you in 1998. Season's greetings from Star Printing at the foot of the 8th Street Bridge in Brandon. Pulse Sports is brought to you by Dufresne Furniture and Appliances, where we simply sell for less. Welcome back. Mike joins us again for some more sports. Report cards. We're going to talk about report cards. Do you ever get a report card that you were unhappy with? I don't know. No. No? No. <laughs> Always pretty brilliant. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like to think so. <laughs> Me too. Me too. I got A's and I often thought <laughs> this should be a new standard. Mm -hmm. Ryan Robson has never played a full WHL season. Injuries have taken their toll on the Russell native, including shoulder surgery this past summer that caused him to miss the first 15 games of the year. On Sunday, Robson re-injured the shoulder and his status is somewhat up in the air. His status for tonight is certain. He'll watch from the seats and right now he's down at ice level with Dean Malberg. Thank you, Mike. Glad you're not asking me about my report cards. We're live at the Keystone Center. Game time between the Warriors and the Weekings will be 7.30 tonight. You mentioned the Russell native, Ryan Robson. I'm thinking between the two of us, we're the, we are the pride of the parkland. I'm from Roblin, you're from Russell. I mean, you being the there in Flurry Hill, I mean, you are really the pride of Russell, aren't you? Oh, I don't know about that, but whatever. Uh, we were talking uh, early on about the injury. It is a shoulder injury. Can you tell us the status? Yeah, my shoulder's really good. Uh, last Sunday, I had a big scare. I thought for sure I was going to be out for a long time, but uh, sounds encouraging. I should be back right after Christmas, so I'll be ready to go. Now, that, sh that shoulder injury, you had a had surgery on that, had you not? Yeah, it was in last May I had it done, but uh, the doctor said that the injury I just had had nothing to do with what he repaired, so uh, no problem. Let's talk about injuries. Nine scratches on the lineup tonight. I guess it's, it's uh, a good thing that you have guys like Kirby Law and Brad Tordick who have got the, the scoring streaks on the way to try and lessen that blow. Yeah, well, that's for sure. I mean, guys like Brad and Kirby have to step it up when all these guys are out. And uh, big guys playing big games, and when we're down like that, it seems like the weak kings always, always play a little bit harder, and we always do a little bit better when we're shorthanded, so it's good. You guys are, I guess, officially back in the hunt. You're in second place, one point up in the Pats, four back, seven, two, and one in your last ten. You guys are on a roll. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we had a couple meetings there in the last few weeks, and we haven't been playing 60-minute games, and we, we thought we'd just get back to the, the little things like hard work, and uh, we've been getting closer to a 60-minute game, and sure enough, uh, the wins are starting to come. You guys are fortunate in that uh, usually it's your January that is really rough. A lot of road games, very few here at the Keystone. This year, that uh, month was your November. It's got to be a plus knowing that when you come back from the Christmas break, you're not going to have as many road games. Well, that's for sure. We got the toughest part of the schedule out of the way, so that, that's encouraging. And, uh, and, and we're on a roll right now, so uh, hopefully when we get back from Christmas, we can keep her going and uh, get in the right direction. You guys see these Moose Shaw Warriors quite a bit through the course of the season. Always a frisky affair. What do you expect tonight? Oh, I expect nothing different than what we usually see. It'll be a hard hitting and uh, lots of intensity and a uh, good game from Russell, Manitoba. The pride of the parkland right here down at the Keystone. Thanks for joining me, Ryan. Game time is 7.30. The Warriors and the Wheat Kings going to be a dandy. Get your tickets. There are still some available at the Keystone Center box office. Mike, back to you. Wouldn't be the pride of Ryan wasn't there. At 21, 11, and 4, the Brandon Wheat Kings have now completed half their schedule. Dean's going to kill me. Kelly McCribbin will tell you being on pace for over 90 points is more than acceptable, but just how well have the Wheats played so far this season? We try and sort it out with a mid-season report card. The tough part is, where do we start with the good news or the bad? 
how about the good and anything positive has to start with the offense, especially from the overagers. Jason Boyd is still a young player, but dealing him for Kirby Law at this point has to be considered a steal, to say the least. Law easily has been the best two-way player on the team and is running neck and neck with Kelly Smart for the team scoring lead. All Smart has done is put himself on pace for his first 100-point season. He's having the type of year that should make him marketable for IHL teams next season. Corey Sarin, like Law and Smart, is on pace for over 100 points. And if Stefan Cherneski stays healthy for the second half, he too could join the Century Club, giving the team four players over 100 points. Brad Twardick has caught fire and is primed for a big 36 games to finish the year, showing the Wheats that they'll be in good hands next season. Let's go from the offense to the defense. At the start of the season, this group gets an A+, but various factors have caused a bit of a decline. Injuries to Daniel Tatro, Scott McCallum, and Les Borsheim have played a big part. However, Burke Henry is proving to be, at the very least, an equal to what Justin Kurtz was last year. Henry is the second-best offensive defenseman in the league and a serious threat to win the Bill Hunter Trophy as top defenseman. And Andre Lupandin is stepping up his play. He's no longer reliability, and the Ukrainian is improving at both ends of the ice with each passing game. Everyone is always hard on the goaltending, but if you look at the stats, the Wheats are still one of the best in the league at preventing goals. Granted, the Wheats coaching staff probably would like to see more consistent play from their number one man, David Hahn, but Hahn does have 13 wins. You'd be crazy to suggest the rookies behind Hahn could be any better. Joe Mark Cruz has been so impressive, NHL scouts are phoning ahead to see what nights he's going to play. And Jamie Hodson became the first WHL goalie in history to record two shutouts in his first two starts. A knee injury has hampered Hodson as of late, but there's nothing wrong with a four one-on-one -on -one ledger. We'll touch on a number of things in the miscellaneous category. Overall, we'll give this mark a B. The addition of Law gives the Wheats an element they didn't have last year, that being someone who takes offense to an aggressive tactic by the other team. And speaking of aggressive, how much more could Randy Ponty be? Quickly becoming a fan favorite, he fights anybody in sight, and more often than not, wins. As a team, the Wheat Kings road record is not acceptable at all, despite playing some decent games, but still coming on the losing end during that brutal stretch in November. This is the one and perhaps only area that will have to improve drastically in the second half. Let's shift gears just a bit. The 13th annual Crocus Plains Boys Basketball Shootout continues today with some playoff action. The finals are tomorrow. This morning, the Round Robin finished up, and Beaver Bray finished first in their pool after they beat the JV Boys from Crocus by a score of 98-67. to Churchill claims top spot in Pool 4 with a 99-91 victory over Nipawa. Vincent Massey hammered the Swan Valley Tigers. 101-29 this morning. Swan Valley's rebuilding. The Vikings were on the floor late this afternoon against Beaver Bray. No score has been reported. Crocus Plains Varsity has beaten Fort Francis 64-59. They'll play Churchill tonight in playoff action this afternoon. It was Elton over the Plainsman JVs 82-57, while Fort Francis defeated Nipawa 50-44. Both winners from this afternoon advance to tomorrow's B final. And that is going to put a wrap on sports right. too. Should mention before I go, Oleg Tevardovsky, who is holding out uh, for the Phoenix Coyotes, signed his contract today. Three right. point something million for two years. Wow. Mm -hmm. Like being on the other side of the report card thing, eh? You're good at that. I'm very, I, I love on handing the out side. the marks. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks, Mike. And still to come on Pulse News at 6, a new movie was released today that is truly of epic proportions. Titanic hits the big screen. Are you brushing twice a day? You could be ruining your hair. It's true. A simple act of brushing can break your hair. The solution? Pantene Pro-V shampoo and conditioners to help keep your hair strong so it breaks less. Pantene Pro-V, for hair so healthy looking it shines. <coughs> when you need to stop a cough, get fast-acting, long-lasting relief with Vicks Formula 44. One dose coats your cough-irritated throat to start soothing in five minutes and can last through the night. For fast-acting, long-lasting relief, get Vicks Formula 44. After a bath, their skin is so soft and smooth. But after the diaper goes on, the day goes on. The freshness fades. So Pampers Premium added a new Gentle Touch Liner Plus Aloe. Its special layer of protection helps keep skin feeling softer and smoother than before. Moms know caring for skin is important. So Pampers Premium created the Gentle Touch Liner Plus Aloe. A diaper can make a difference if it's new Pampers Premium. Pamper the skin they're in.
Extra value means extra savings for you. Fowler Pontiac Buick GMC and GM of Canada are pleased to offer you reduced rate financing on over 120 new 1997 and 1998 models. Get 0% financing up to 48 months on two- and four-wheel drive pickups, safari vans, and transport vans. And on selected new cars, take advantage of low 2.9% financing. Fowler Pontiac Buick GMC is making buying that new vehicle a whole lot easier with low-rate financing on new 1997 and 98 models. Hurry in to 3900 Victoria Avenue for this limited-time offer. Season greetings and happy holidays from the TV production staff at CKX. The production crew would like to say thank you to all of our viewers for choosing CKX. We hope you have a joyous holiday season filled with family and friends. Season greetings. Welcome back. The last weekend before Christmas is always a big event at the box office. And today isn't any different. The three-hour epic Titanic was released today. Here's Colin McLean with a review. Before we even service it, let me tell you one thing about Titanic. It's an epic, cinematic experience. Everything you've heard and more. If the film did cost $200 million, then every cent is on that screen. It's an hour and three quarters before the ship even hits that fateful iceberg. During that time, you get to know the glories of Titanic. Not up to you to save me, Jack. But even more important, you get to meet two young people who provide the beating heart of this remarkable film. Kate Winslet is Rose, a headstrong young lady about to make the mistake of her life and marry this man. We're both of the lamb. Rare with very little mint sauce, eh? You like lamb, right, sweet pea? Rich, spoiled, selfish, <laughs> Billy Zane. I'm the king of the world! The other is Jack, Leonardo DiCaprio, who wins his third class ticket in a poker game. Now forget it, boy. You'll never get next to the likes of her. The free-spirited Jack and the enclosed Rose do get close, very close, and fall in love. It's a tribute to these two fine actors and their director, Canadian James Cameron, that they never get overpowered by the awesome events to come. Right ahead! Roll away! The water is freezing and there aren't enough boats. Half the people on this ship are going to die. And when they do, well, you've never seen anything like this before. A small screen can never encompass the awesome sight of the sinking of the unsinkable Titanic. The computer effects are fluid and invisible, but you must see them for yourself on that big screen. The story Cameron tells is a melodramatic one, but what are you going to do with a tale that has fired the imagination for most of this century? Titanic is three hours and 18 minutes long, and there's not a wasted moment in that entire length. I'm going to uh, go back and see it again just as soon as I can. Doesn't that look like a great movie? He gave it five stars. Wow. And uh, I, I have not seen the movie. I would, I'm going to see the movie, right. but I am a Titanic freak. I have a vested interest in the, that particular boat, and uh, I have read everything there is to know about the Titanic. Huh. There is even uh, a Titanic uh, memorial in Brandon, believe it or not, is at uh, St. Matthew's oh. Cathedral, one of the stained glass mm. windows there. And there's also a Titanic... Uh, uh, aficionado, you might say, in Portage La Prairie. Wow. Uh, who's got expert. artifacts from the Titanic. <laughs> yes, indeed. We'll chat sometime. <laughs> we must. <laughs> Long chat. Okay, quickly looking at the weather. <laughs> and we have a few clouds tonight, the light winds, and temperatures by morning. Chilly, minus 16. And the, by the way, it's down to minus 9 right now from uh, minus 3 an hour ago. Variable cloud. Look at tomorrow. Minus 1. Then Sunday. Variable cloud up to 6 degrees, 10 in Calgary for uh, Sunday, low of minus 5. Then cooling off on the weekend, uh, Monday minus 2, and on Tuesday, minus 7 with sunshine. Great. More great weather on the way. Yeah. Great. Hmm. Are you going to watch Titanic? No, let's talk Titanic. Oh, you lost Titanic. Yeah, I'm excited I'm going to watch the Titanic, but i got to watch the Week Kings tonight. Okay. Seven. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's it for me. Great. Okay. <laughs> well, that's our time. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll see you back here on Monday. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. <laughs>